Hi, I'm Arlene, and the title of this session is Technological Tools for Reaching Students. Um, I'm going to close this so that you can uh, see all the content on the remaining PowerPoints. Okay, I teach in the Nutrition and Dietetics Department on the Logan campus at Utah State University, and um, I'm excited to be able to go through a few of the tools that I've discovered lately or that I use pretty often, and I hope that they'll be helpful to you. So let me start with this quote. This is from the authors of the book called The New Science of Learning, How to Learn in Harmony with Your Brain. And in that book, they say essentially that learning is more difficult for those who are passive listeners rather than active participants. Learners create stronger connections in their brain when they engage with something in more than one way. And for me, this is my purpose for using technology. I feel like it can be a tool that allows students to become active participants and, and think about something in a different way or a new way so they can really make connections. Uh, at the same time, just because a tool exists doesn't mean that you should use it. And so I think that sometimes in our teaching profession, we have this tendency to want to try out everything. But um, the key is to find tools that really match with your course and the objectives that you're trying to accomplish. Because if you're using a tool ineffectively, then it can um, really have a negative outcome. So when I'm, well, I like, I like uh, what this author says about making relationship building the, the thing you start with and then choosing your tools from there. So he says, the mindset of inclusion must determine the ways in which technology is used. I've seen instructors blindly adopt tools without adjusting their pedagogy or thought behind behind what the human interaction will look like afterwards. So technology and innovation in higher education do matter, but only to the end that it supports the building of a respectful open community of learners. So um, I'd like you to keep that in mind throughout this presentation. Here are some questions that I tend to ask myself before I choose a, a teaching tool. Um, first, is it accessible and affordable? Uh, to both me and to students? Is it user-friendly? Uh, does it integrate well with our learning management system? At Utah State, that happens to be Canvas. Um, and it's fine to choose tools outside of Canvas or ones that don't integrate. But if it can integrate with Canvas, then I feel like it makes it more accessible. Does it fit into my course and does it help meet my objectives? And then will it enhance the learning of my students and be something that benefits them? So that's really the purpose of this session is to highlight some of those tools that uh, meet that checklist of questions and allow students to um, really engage. So before I um, launch into a list of those tools, here's something I'd encourage if um, you come to this link down here, it goes to a Google, a Google Doc sign-up sheet where you can add your uh, email address and then I will give you access to a Canvas course that I've built that has some additional resources and information about the tools that I'll, I'll share today. Um, if you click on the link that says technological tools and that will take you to this presentation. And then here's a list or an outline of everything that's in there. We're, we won't have time to go through all of it in, in this recorded lecture, but um, you can browse afterwards on all of those pages. I have lots of great colleagues who help contribute to this and uh, they shared some really good stuff. So I hope you'll check that out. For today, here's what I would like to kind of review. And I wanna go in an ABC order um, back here to our Canvas page, you can see that it goes from A to Z. And so for this video, we'll do A to F. So let's start with atomic assessments. Oh, but before we do, let me explain a few little icons that you will see on, 
on the on the slides that I show you. A smiley face means that this tool is free or, or that a free version exists for both students and faculty. Uh, the little man here means it's collaborative or, or a tool that can be used for um, competition. And then this means that there's no sign in or download required. And then the little phone means that it's accessible with a phone as well as a computer. So Atomic Assessments is a tool in Canvas. It's a new tool, um, you must need at least. And it's meant to be interactive and a little bit more um, advanced than the typical quiz tool in Canvas. And so in order to enable it, then you go to your settings link on your Canvas page, and then you click on the navigation tab at the, at the top, and then you can click enable atomic assessments from that list. The cool thing about atomic assessments is that there are so many different question types. So things like drag and drop and charting and maps and in addition to multiple choice and essay questions that we're used to. So the other neat thing is that you can embed atomic assessments right onto a canvas page along with your other content and videos and other stuff so that students don't have to go to a separate place. Uh, to take a quiz. They can just do it all in one spot. Here's what the Atomic Assessment page looks like in the, in the Canvas course that I created. And you can click through those links to get some screenshots of, of what those questions could look like and then also a two, a two minute video that gives you an overview as, as well as some other information to get you started. The city team at Utah State also offers some great workshops that walk you through the atomic assessment uh, setup and how to use them. So I'd encourage you to take advantage of those. Uh, the second tool I'd like to talk about is Bungie Link. Bungie Link is a digital response system. And the reason I like digital response systems, including Bungie Link, is that it's a tool that gives learners a voice that they mean that they mean well this quote over here means that sometimes you have students who are quiet or reserved or just like to be kind of on the perimeter. But when you allow them to interact using a digital response system, then, then, then suddenly they have a voice. And so um, I like that. You can also make um, responses anonymous or, or uh, give credit by having names in a digital response system. So Bungie Link is fairly new, but it was created by two professors in response to, um, well, some of the frustrations that they had with existing digital response systems. And, and the thing that they were um, wanting to do the most was to provide a free tool to students instead of one that they had to pay for. And so I'll just share two things that I really like about Bungie Link. One is the ability to do uh, instant polling or, or do asynchronous polling. So you can either do polls in a live classroom or you can do polls um, and leave them open for a period of time so that students can go in um, and do them on their own. So here are some examples of the question polls that Bungie Link offers. You can do a, a multiple choice or true false question. You can also do a short answer question and uh, students can respond to that. And then you can do a word cloud question. And so those are examples. Uh, if you go to the Bungie Link page on the, on the Canvas course that I built, then you can go through a poll on your own and kind of see uh, what it's like. The other thing that I really like about Bungie Link is this flashcards piece. And so when students enroll in your Bungie Link section, uh, you have the option of having them create a profile and adding a picture as well as um, responding to some questions that will introduce themselves. And so in this case, uh, my name would be Marlene, and this is a picture that I'm going to upload, and then 
these are the questions that I'm going to answer. And then the instructor can see this view and click here to reveal the name of that student. And it's a way to learn names and put names and faces together quickly. You can also allow students to see the flashcard um, deck so that they can learn their classmates' names as well. There's some other features on Bungie Link that are great. Um, they, they tend to overlap with Canvas or a learning management system. And so this is something that can be used either in addition to a learning management system or kind of as um, as a substitute or replacement for a learning management system if if you're new to Canvas or if you're um, kind of uncomfortable in, in Canvas functionality. So Canvas tools, I, I guess I have to say that I, I love the functionality of Canvas and I use it a lot. And um, I think that students really depend on Canvas. And so as an instructor, if you can utilize that tool, I think that it's really helpful to your students. Here's a few new things um, that I've learned, and I, I've explained these more on my Canvas uh, page called Graph, Graph Session. I just want to demonstrate a couple of them. So if you come to uh, one of your Canvas courses, and uh, let's say that you want to share a page. So I'm going to come actually to a new course Whoops. And let's choose this one right here. Let's say that I'm teaching multiple sections of this class or that I want to share this page with another instructor. I have the ability uh, by clicking up here uh, to either send it to someone or copy this page to another course that I'm teaching. So let's do copy to and I'm going to type in one of my courses. I'm going to send it to a sandbox course and you can request from an instructional designer that that they create a sandbox for you and for me i use that sandbox to kind of play around in and test out different tools and things in um, canvas so that i can learn them well before i put them in a real course so here's my sandbox and that page did come over so here it is right here there we go right there but um now we need to designate the front page as the home page so if you come here and then you say choose home page and make it my front page then here's the page that we just copied so as i mentioned before you can also share this with with a colleague so let's say that i want to um share it with uh katie brown and so then I type in Katie's uh, name and I can send that to her. And when it when it comes to Katie, then it will show up here under shared content. And then she and then it, it helps save work and time. And you can share templates or information with your colleagues who are already in Canvas. So that's kind of a cool tool. Another feature that I love um, and I'll come back to maybe uh, this craft session class is that you can email students pretty easily now even before they uh, gain access to canvas or even before your first day of class so over here you can download a class roster with all of their names and emails and then it shows up in an excel file and you can send an actual email to them uh, like an intro email before your course starts you can also see student cards and these are pictures that they have elected to upload and then you can kind of put names and faces together you also have the option to see only users with who have uploaded pictures and then uh, that will help you learn your students a little bit better i showed this page because this is faculty pictures instead of stu student pictures and so um that was my reasoning all right, so there's several other things you can do with Canvas. I hope you'll add yourself to my uh, Canvas page so that you can 
learn a few extra th things. All right, let's do digital escape rooms. I really like this tool now. I learned about it about a year ago, and so I've been uh, using it ever since. I used it for fall semester of 2019 and also spring of 2020 and got some feedback from students. Here's a little demo of what that digital escape room looks like. You're essentially using um, Google Forms to set it up. And so you can either embed this into Canvas or you can just put a link in Canvas that connects students to this form um, on their Google Drive account. And so the questions that are required are have a little red dot by them. So here you can put your your name and then you're going to go through and you're going to answer questions and uh, when you finish then this is where you put a code and the instructions that I have for my digital escape rooms are to type the letters of the correct answers in order without any spaces or uh, commas. So in this case, it's DCBA. And if I click next, then it allows me to go on if I've, if I've got the code correct and all the answers correct. If I type the code in incorrectly, or if I missed one of those answers and did it wrong, then it would tell me it's still locked, try again. And so I have to go back and answer questions again until I get them all right, and then I can move on. So I will post that demo um, link on my Canvas course, and then you can try it out. I'll, I'll also add some sections so that you can see what it looks like as an extended view. Um, here's a copy of a handout that I created that shows you how to create a digital escape room. And I walk you through step by step. And uh, I watched lots of YouTube videos on my own and did lots of trial and error stuff to figure this out. And so I've tried to make it easy for you by putting it all in, in one handout. And so on the first two pages, there's written instructions on the second two pages. And there, there is a visual format that gives you screenshots that match up with these steps. So I hope that will be helpful to you. Here's some examples of how I've used it in my course. I teach an introductory nutrition course and we talk about vitamins and minerals. And I like to use pictures to help students make associations between the picture and what certain nutrients do. And so here's a picture of a study guide that I provided for them. And, and then after they had you know, spent some time on that study guide, here was another way that I helped them review that information. And so this was uh, their uh, escape room. And then down here, I have added the pictures and they're supposed to choose the nutrient that it goes with. And then down here, I did four on a section and then and then they typed in the code. And, and every section represents a, a room. And for this, one, I had 12 rooms that they had to get through. So that was one example of a way that I used it. Uh, another way in a different course is I have students do this worksheet at the beginning of a chapter. And to start with, I, I let them work in groups for about 10 minutes. It's not quite long enough for them to get through all the questions, but it's long enough for them to get their feet wet and to kind of start talking about the content. And then they finish this um, worksheet on their own, but instead of turning it into me for grading, then they do this digital escape room and they enter their question, I mean, their answers to those questions. And, and then if they can progress all the way through, then they know that they've got all of the questions right. And so they're, they're kind of self-checking. This is the, um, the uh, matching one. So let's see, on this first page they're matching and then true false and then multiple choice. And so I've 
uh, in the sections that I create, then I do four or five matching ones at a time, and then a true false section, and then uh, two or three matching sections. So if you do too many questions in one escape room, then it can get a little bit overwhelming and too tricky. Um, so I, I would caution you about putting too many questions in one room. And yet, if you only do one question in a room, then they just go A, B, C, D until they uh, find a letter that lets them advance without really challenging them. So I would recommend at least three questions per uh, room but no more than five or six. Uh, on this one, I used this as a group activity and I gave students some content to review um, before they did this digital escape room. So they were supposed to review it on their own, go through some power, uh, go through some um, material. And then uh, we came together as a, as a class and I divided them into groups. And then we had a competition and the groups that had students who had reviewed this material in advance were the fastest at getting through this digital escape room. And, and so that was a fun group activity and just another way to utilize digital escape rooms. After students have done uh, an escape room and they've submitted their responses, then as a teacher, I can go in and I can click on the responses tab at the top and uh, download all of the data and that's how I give students credit, or that's how I know who participated, and that's how I, I can kind of see what uh, questions they're answering and doing well on and what the amount of time is and that sort of thing. Here's what my students say about um, digital escape rooms. These are three random responses that I uh, picked after I did a little survey in spring of 2020. One student said, um, the escape rooms have been really helpful for me, whether I'm completing them as part of a group or on my own. Uh, and then the process of being able to put down answers and not being able to move on until we get them right is excellent. It gives me an opportunity to fix my mistakes. And that makes it easier to remember answers later. I'm prone to being okay with a few wrong answers, so this has been helpful in helping me overcome that. Another student said, sometimes I feel overwhelmed by all the information in this class. So it's helpful for me to review what I learned by doing something like a digital escape room. I feel better prepared for tests because of these and they help me master key points. And then I really liked what she said here. She said, doing a digital escape room is a form of studying, but it doesn't feel like studying. If I think they're fun. I also get immediate feedback so I can see what I missed and understand why. So here's a, the page with digital escape rooms and um, more information and I hope that uh, you'll check that out and let me know uh, what your experience is with those. So easy and simple ones. Uh, on the my Canvas section, I have several links um, to little things like a timer or a random name picker, things that I can use kind of throughout class to enhance uh, our experience and uh, help keep students engaged. And then the final one, I'll let I'll let you pick, uh, and if you, you know, add your name to that Google Sheet, I can put you in that Canvas course, and then here are, are the ones you can choose from. And this link is also on my presenter page on the ETE, or Empowering Teaching Excellence uh, conference website. So right down here, additional sources sign up, we'll get you into that uh, Canvas course. Um, I'll just end with a couple of quotes. Technology is just a tool. In terms of getting students working together and motivating them, the teacher is most important. And I would agree that you're the guide and without you, the tool uh, is not as effective. Uh, here's another quote that emphasizes that same concept. Integrating technology with face-to-face -face teacher time generally produces better academic outcomes than employing either technique alone. And then a final quote, it's not about the technology. It's about sharing knowledge and information, communicating efficiently, building learning communities, and creating a culture of professionalism in schools. These are the key responsibilities of all educational leaders. And technology is a tool that help, can help enhance all of those things. 
And so thank you for your time and listening to this and engaging. And I, I hope that you'll um, reach out or else um, explore more on your own in that Canvas course. Um, I, I'll give credit to uh, Slides Carnival that uh, created this template slide deck and also Unsplash that provided photographs. And then I use the Bitmoji icon or, or the Bitmoji app to create my little avatar. So uh, thank you, and I hope that uh, you'll have a great experience with using technology.